welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and like the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching. With that being said, this is the third and final part of this mini series. Honestly, I could write so much more, but I had to cut it short because I already kind of said that this would only be three parts. Along with the other two parts, this was requested by Hanukkah-chan, which you might know from Nerdy Nekla. Now, if you have not already, check out their channel! I think I've made my point. The silence was so thick and heavy. It was almost suffocating. Like all the oxygen disappeared from their lungs, leaving them in an inferno. Daichi almost forgot to breathe. Asahi took a step back, feeling like he was intruding on the moment. Daichi agreed that he was going to confront his husband, but now that the moment was here, so suddenly, it was like all of his words were forgotten. He examined the shortest features, how the tip of his nose and eyes slowly turned red whenever he was getting ready to cry, and the worried crease on his forehead. Koshi, I... He was cut off and he was tackled to the ground in his lover's embrace which is what he longed for, for the past two months. It hurt so bad. Asi had to retain himself from pulling Suga off to prevent Daichi from hurting, but the way they cried into each other's loving embrace was enough to make him not interfere. Suga pulled away first and cupped his lover's face in his hands to examine him, for the first time in what felt like a lifetime, relishing the moment of seeing him alive. The teacher was at a loss of words. He didn't even know how to start a conversation. His thumbs gently brushed over the small cuts, careful not to hurt him. The smaller looked down, grabbing the latter's arms to move it slightly. Daichi knew what happened when Suga's breath hitched. He saw all of the injuries. Frantic hazel eyes met his soft and reassuring ones, telling the teacher it was okay and that he was fine. Suga let his eyes fall freely, and he couldn't help but smile and laugh, turning towards Asahi. You found him! He was afraid to let go of his husband, afraid that if he did, Daichi would be out of his reach again. He glanced back down at the injuries. He couldn't see the full extent, since they were covered with bandages. He knew that the chances of him being injured were high, but not this bad. But the most important thing... You're alive! You're... alive. He broke into another round of tears, relishing the moment all over again. Did you call for someone? He turned towards the alumni ace. I... Well, no? He raised his eyebrow in confusion. What do you mean, no? He was missing, and we found him. And he is hurt. He explained, trying to lay out all simplistically, giving every good reason to call for help. Well, he was cut off by Daichi, which the taller brunette was forever thankful for. Koshi, darling, look at me. Hearing those enchanted words, Suga turned all of his attention towards Daichi. What is it? Does something hurt? No, just... He paused, not sure how the word the word words right. I'm not coming home. Or we can go ahead and be blunt about it. What? What do you mean you aren't coming home? We found you. You're safe now. So... Ko. Sugawara's lips thin and attempted to collect himself knowing that something was up. I can't go back with you. I can't explain it, but as long as you are with me, you aren't safe. There was a long, dull moment of silence. Daichi stared at his lover, waiting for some sort of response. 
Part of him was hoping for him to be understanding, but as we all know, Sugawara Koshi was one of the most unpredictable individuals known. That's bullshit, and you know it. Asi backed away from the situation, only imagining the scenarios going through his head. Keeping me safe? That's ridiculous. I said, shut up. He snapped at the injured man, not wanting to hear any more excuses. Tell me, what happened to it in sickness and in health? Or, till death does his part? Suomura, you made a vow to me, a promise of our love. Daishi knew he royally messed up whenever Koshi used his family name. Not once had he ever used it. The teacher took a moment to collect himself. He didn't know what was right. Should he go against his lover's will and force him back into society to get him the proper treatment he needs? Or should he respect his wishes and leave him alone? Neither seemed like the best option. Either way, someone was bound to get hurt. I thought whenever we made those vows, we also secretly vowed that we could take on anything together. Hell, Daiji, being with you made me believe that we could survive the apocalypse barehanded together. He stood up, taking one last glance at his husband. I'm not one to tell you what you should do, but whatever you decide, I respect your decision and support you in the best way I can, because I love you. He wanted to leave right then and there, but part of him was absolutely petrified. What if this was the last time he saw the officer? What if he stuck to his word and left for good? He wanted to be selfish. So bad. He swung his backpack on his back around his shoulder and unzipped it, shuffling through the contents in his bag. He pulled out a phone. You see, Daiji had this terrible habit of getting so sidetracked whenever he goes shopping. He usually leaves his phone laying anywhere. So that day, Daichi responsibly handed his phone over to Sugawara. Here. I never cancelled the phone plan, so it should work. Contact me if you need anything. Is this the end? Did their journey together conclude just so easily like that? I'll leave. Before Daichi could stop him, he was already gone. He just needs some time. I'll see if I his input to reassure the brunette. Koshi has been through hell the entire time you were missing, so this information will take a minute to process. Knowing him, he is probably overthinking things and thinks that this is the end of you two. I see his eyes widen. Is it the end? The officer looked down, making the taller sigh. I agree with him. I'm not one to say what you should do, but you didn't marry someone weak. Koshi is strong and would gladly raise hell for you. Daichi sat in silence, thinking it all over. I'm going to go check on him. I'll be back tomorrow. Right. See you later. Daichi ruffled his hair in frustration. Just what mess had he gotten in? He was right there. Right in his reach. Right in his sight. Why didn't he do anything? Sugara felt like pulling his hair out for doing that. Pulling his hair out. Wait, is that a gray hair? A what? Daichi started running his fingers through his hair, blindly trying to pick it out. No, Ko, get it off! He smiled, recalling that memory vividly. Such a dork. He laughed lightly before frowning. 
He remembered seeing a lot more gray hairs than before, thinking back it had been a full two months. Two months where he spent stressing and suffering, it hadn't made him age well in that aspect. He sighed, it seems like that's all he did so often these days. He eventually decided to go through the mail that he neglected over the past two months. It was a mountain of paperwork. Maybe he finally decided to do something after physically seeing Daichi, even though he was a little banged up. There were some letters addressed to Suomara residents, Sugawara Koshi, Suomara Koshi, and Suomara Daichi. It seemed that getting his name transferred over was much more of a process than he originally thought, and there was a lot he still needed to do. There was a certain yellow envelope that stuck out to him. It had bright bold letters, classified first class for Daichi. He couldn't help but feel curious, wanting to know what it was, so he opened it. It's not like Daichi was there to stop him. The thought made him laugh bitterly. Inside was a thick packet of paper, stapled together. Most of it seemed like gibberish, and with nothing making sense. Half of it was a different language. He knew a little English, but not that much. Big hazel orbs quickly skimmed over the words. Wait. Is this? His eyes lit up in excitement. Daichi, you got into- He turned around the living room to be met with an empty living room. Well, that's kind of pathetic. He isn't even dead. Just gone. He turned back to the papers. Shortly before their marriage, Daichi applied pretty much everywhere to transfer over to different stations to have a new start. It was super spontaneous, but he even applied in London. The letters in his hands was Daichi's acceptance letter. His heroic deeds from the explosion was noticed by their elite station and sent the letter out in hopes whenever Daichi was found, they would join. Then it hit him like a million bricks. He had an idea. An idea that could save both him and Daichi. He gathered up the contents of the letter and ran towards the door. While doing so, he collided into someone. He looked up to see Asahi. Again, his insane height never ceased to amaze him. Hey, uh, are you doing alright? The brunette paused, seeing the smaller smiling cheekily like he used to, and almost seemed excited. Are you okay? Now, he was genuinely concerned. Yes! He was so overwhelmed with excitement and joy, he gave Asahi a huge bear hug completely stunning him. What's going on? I think I found it! Found what? Koshi giggled and began dragging the giant out of the house. Where are you taking me? You'll see. Daichi stared blankly at the wall in front of him. He had known the love of his life since they were first years in high school. He never once imagined, back then, that he would want to spend forever with him. He thought that everything would be set in place once they were married. But now, there had never been so much space between them. The events of their entire time together has changed him, a sight he wished he wouldn't see. He remembers the moment he told Koshi that he wouldn't be coming home. He couldn't face his broken heart. He had never felt so helpless before. Daichi! He was ripped from his own thoughts, turning towards the shoulder, running towards him. It was almost a magical moment if he didn't have to remember the cruel reality. What are you doing here? He glanced towards Asahi, who shrugged, also having no idea what was going on. I know I said I would support your decisions, but at least hear me out. I think we can start over. Somewhere else. Stop asking me to stay. Damn it, Koshi. Why are you so stubborn? He internally laughed. That was one of the traits he fell in love with. Look. He handed the envelope full of documents that showed that he was accepted to work abroad. 
What is this? It's our chance to start a future together. Stop. Why doesn't he get it? He can't be near me. He'll only get hurt. Never before was he so afraid of his own thoughts. None of this started before the explosion. Why did all of this have to happen? Thinking back, he never regretted a single word that he told Koshi. The teacher being in his life meant the world to him. That's all he wanted. All he needed. Koshi, I... I can't. You can. You're just afraid. Daichi, that man is gone. He won't hurt you or me ever again. But there could be more. And if there is, we will handle it as we always have. Together. I just got you back. I'm not letting you go again. Stop asking me to stay. You can't save me. Dai, you aren't alone. There isn't a doubt. You always feel a need to save me and keep me safe when you are the one that needs saving. Suka crouched down to his lover's side, offering his hand. Let me save you this time. No. Stop it. You don't have to do this alone. Why? For when Daichi was left questioning everything he ever knew, why was Koshi so persistent? Why was he so willing to help? So willing to drop everything and leave for him? He looked up and connected his gaze with Suga. It was like the very first time he truly saw him. Because it's only natural that I'm there if you need help. And right now, I've never heard someone scream for help like you are now. The brunette finally grabbed a hold of Suga's hand that was still extended out towards him and yanked him into his embrace, not wanting to let go ever again. And it was just like that. Daichi crumbled down into his lover's embrace, letting every single emotion that he had felt in the time he was gone hit him all at once, like a lightning strike. Or maybe even the worst tsunami. Nothing was clear. Although, the only thing he did know was that he was finally home. After hours of nagging, Sugawara convinced the latter to actually go to the hospital and get his wounds treated. He was always a separate one, but that's the thing. Both of them were equally stubborn, that's what made them a power couple back in high school. It turns out, the hospital had lots of information on Daichi's condition. He had second degree burns, and even some third degree in some areas. Bad enough, he needed to get a procedure called skin grafting to cover up severely burned areas. After getting some much needed stitches on his thigh and chest and almost an ungodly amount of anesthesia, Daichi was good to go by the next day. Luckily, he didn't suffer from any broken bones, but that was the least of his worries. Honestly, the whole skin grafting thing didn't sit too well with Koshi. In fact, it almost made him nauseous. His injuries were this bad, for so long even, and there was no one to help him. It was going to be a long recovery process, but he was willing to wait and be patient, all while supporting his husband in any way he could, and wait for him to get back on his feet for them to start a new life together. Almost a whole two weeks has passed since Daichi was found, and he was more than eager to move around again. This was of course with Sugawara scolding him. Daichi! What? He dragged out the A vowel in a whine. I told you not to push yourself. But I'm not. Suga gave him the eye that 
said at least a hundred words, but the only way to describe it was, oh really, look. I hardly consider this pushing myself. He added into his argument, pointing to the stacked up files on his desk. Who knew that being missing for so long could make work pad up? The teacher sighed in defeat. Fine, but you still have to take it easy. Even though this isn't physical labor, you still need to look out for your limits mentally. Daishi looked down. No one ever really knew that he was so mentally hurt. Not once had he or anyone else seen him crumble like that. New habits were formed. Sugura unintentionally always checked in on Daichi, whether personally or through messages. He would always gently lay on Daichi's chest, taking in the sweet sound of his heartbeat. Daichi was also super wary of his and his lover's surroundings, making sure that history never repeats itself. Only in a matter of weeks, the married couple had packed up their things and left the country, moving to England. Of course, they were sad to see their hometown and country gone, but this was for the best. And honestly, Koshi would gladly take any sacrifice for the brunette. And there they were. Once again, standing in the empty apartment, just as before. So, about the furniture. Hell no. We were ordering that online. They broke into a fit of laughter, without a care in the world. The couple had been through hell and back in the very short time they had been married, and was even so close to losing it all. Their blissful honeymoon was short-lived, given Daichi was gone the second day after their wedding. He still had some worries, and was beyond cautious of everything, but he learned a lot from the love of his life. He was going to trust and love him till the end. He smirked, sweeping up his lover by the waist, and pulled him in closer. Oh, what is this about? The white-haired teacher returned the smile, with their noses rubbing together, only inches away from each other. I love you so much. He said it in the husky voice that made Koshi's knees go weak. I love you more. He said, closing the distance in between them, getting lost in the love. Daichi broke away first. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Koshi smugly smiled. I think I do. I declare a rematch. What was it? 34 out of 1? Yeah, no way you're catching up. Hey, who knows? Maybe those two months alone I became secretly a pro. This caused Suga to giggle, hiding his face into Daichi's shoulder. That's unlikely. Wouldn't know if we don't try. Daichi pouted, which is smaller would gladly give in to and spoil him rotten. Okay, you're on. For the rest of the night, the couple was sprawled all over their surprisingly comfortable carpet floor with game controllers and snacks on the floor. Let's not forget Daichi miserably losing. Whenever he was younger, Sugo never once saw his wedding or after would turn out the way that it did. It was hard. Brutal and agonizing in every shape, way, and form. But now, he was taught to treasure every moment and not take a single second for granted. They grew even closer through their journey, and... That was something that they will carry on with them for the rest of their lives. Koshi glanced at his husband, who was currently whining at the recent loss on the game, and smiled reassuringly that this was the man that he fell in love with and would spend the rest of his life with. He doesn't know what the future holds, but he does know that whatever comes their way, they will fight through it. Together. That was fun! I do have some news! Most people know on my Discord, but I've been encouraged to write a book. 
So I'm working on this new project now. I've actually gotten quite far. I've created a couple of biographies with backgrounds, as well as somewhat of a plot, and I've started on the prologue. I've been reading a couple of gay books as the research, and damn, I've never felt so single before. Thank you for watching. As always, if you'd like to be kept up to date, check out any of my social medias. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening.